Well, hello, everybody. Happy Fired Up Live Day. It's so good to be back. I'm your host, like usual, Claudia Heuser, and it's so good to see you. Hope everybody's having an awesome day because guess what? We made it. Episode 12 is here, and it's going to be a really good one, like always. Hope you got your food cooking on the fire disc right now. It's about that time of year where you can really get that thing cranking. Hopefully you're seeing some neighbors maybe back in the backyard and having some good times. There's a lot more of that to come. I'm going to do a song for you. Powered by my coffee and, of course, fire disc cookers. We're going to get to winners later in the episode, so stick around and make sure you leave a comment for your chance to win a fire disc cooker, coffee swag pack, and even a fire disc swag pack. Get some cool new t-shirts for the summer. This song's called This Story. There's all kinds of sweetness and all kinds of crazy in heaven, my God. There's so many days we go running around with our heads in the clouds, driving a heart. It's a good place to start the story. In chapter one, it's always good fun. I'm telling my friends that this could be the one. And he opens the door and leaves me with kisses before he goes. I'm already missing the story. Chapter two, is it all about you or all about us? Keeping the trust, will we swear on a diamond? We'll always keep shining. And when we get older, we'll never go cold in this story.
We have quite the episode for you tonight, and I'm so excited to talk with our special guest. Um, I think she's done almost everything in the whole world, and I can't wait to just ask her about those dirty details, and I'm sure she's going to give them to us because let me tell you, this woman has just paved the way for women in country music, and I'm just going to get into my intro right now so I don't give too much away, but I'm excited to bring her on. It's going to be a great time. Stay tuned. We're going to announce winners after, but make sure you're commenting for a chance to win during the episode. All right? All right, let's do it. They call her Miss Country Soul, and this free-spirited woman with deeply moving vocals is the one and only Pennsylvania native to ever become a member of the Grand Ole Opry, and she became a member in 67, 1967, and she's still so active that you would think that was just a short time ago. She's a part of a very rare club, being one of the very few people to ever have number one hits as not only a solo artist, but as a duet partner and as a songwriter. She's written songs for Dottie West, Doyle Larson, Tex Williams, Lori Morgan, Jack Green, and so many other icons. I can't wait to hear all about it. Um, She's written a book, acted in plays. She is going to be featured in a new book coming out soon. She's got over two dozen hits of her own, including Don't Touch Me, A Wandering Man, and I'll Love You More. Let's give a big, warm, fire this nation welcome to our special guest tonight, Miss Jeannie Seely. Hey, Claudia, thank you so much for inviting me by. I've been wanting to do this. Oh my gosh, I've been looking so forward to talking with you. Thank you for joining us. This is so exciting. What's been going on with Jeannie Seely? Everything is going on with Jeannie Seely. I can't even believe what. Oh. No, I can't even believe because I've got to say when I started diving into, first of all, your history, but then what you're doing now, I don't even know where to start. My jaw has been on the floor. You run circles around everybody, it seems, in Nashville. And um, you're just, you're nonstop and it doesn't seem like you have any plans to be stopping anytime soon. No, I have a theory, you know, where my girlfriend has always said, you know, don't sit down till you have to. We've all got some <laughs> sitting down time coming, so don't do it until you just have to. But uh, I can't believe how fortunate I am that so many great opportunities have still been coming my way at this age and this stage of my career. You know, it's just amazing. And I'm delighted and just trying to keep up with everything. You wouldn't and happy. know it. You wouldn't know how long you've been doing this. I mean, except for the track record of amazing things that you've accomplished. It seems like you were inducted into the Opry only a couple years ago with the amount that you're still involved and how much you're doing and um, just making appearances on XM radio and coming out with new songs and new records. It's just amazing to watch and so inspiring. Um, as a woman of country up and coming here and me looking after so many inspiring women, you definitely have made a name and helped carve a path that I'm just excited to try to follow. Well, Claudia, it's always wonderful to see young ladies like you taking a hold of the reins and doing things. Well, like we were talking about your coffee (laughs) <laughs> and just the way you are reaching out and grabbing life and career and directing it in, in your own way. And that is wonderful. That's exactly what I love seeing with the new artists coming up today. We've chiseled a path, but boy, y'all are just widening the road and it's great. Oh, thank you so much. And yeah, the the women of country out there right now, I think, You really started it, and there has been that force ever since, and um, just girls trying to do their own thing and knowing that it's okay to do their own thing, and people have this idea of what we should be doing, and I think that's a a stigma that's been hard to drop for years and years, but we're still fighting for that spot, and that's something you did fresh out of the gate when you wore that mini skirt on stage at the Opry, and your whole story is scattered with, with little stories like this of you just doing it and saying, hey, here I am, and this is what I'm going to do, and you're going to like it. <laughs> well, you know, part of that, though, Claudia, was an accident. For instance, the miniskirt. 
I had just moved to Nashville from LA. And as you know, fashion starts usually on the West Coast. And Mm -hmm. so anyway, I had never been to the Grand Old Opry until I was on it. I, of course, had listened my whole life, but I'd never been there. I'd seen all the pictures and I just assumed that's what they wanted to wear. (laughs) I've oh never God. tried to I've never tried to create an image for me because I've never felt that I'm any different than any other American girl or woman out there. We live the same lifestyle. We have the mm-hmm. same problems. All, all that's different about me is that I I sing and write songs for a living and the rest of it we all do the same thing. So I like doing whatever's happening now you know, and whatever works for me. But yeah, that's always been a fun thing. The relevance of the miniskirt was it was so drastic. But what it did was give the other women permission. If I got away with that, (laughs) then they could get away with whatever they wanted to wear. So and and they did. I love that story. And maybe maybe if I ever get to the Opry, I'll decide to follow in your footsteps with that one and wear a mini skirt. <laughs> you would be welcome. And I, I hope one day I see you at the Opry. Oh, thank you so much. That's a big dream of mine. And you actually came up in conversation recently on one of our past episodes of Fired Up Live because we had the amazing Rhonda Vincent join us for the show. And your name came up quite a bit. And if if Rhonda's watching tonight, we're going to say hey to Rhonda. Um, And she told us the story about how you surprised her with her Opry invitation to become a member. Um, Oh, my goodness. I was so thrilled to get to do that. Let me say, I was as thrilled getting to invite her, I think, as she was being invited. And I did a little thing because... Uh, knowing Rhonda so well, I thought if I walk back out there, mm-hmm. you know, something's going to click in her mind. I wanted it to be a total <laughs> surprise. So it what was, I did, according to her, what I did, I said, Rhonda, listen, uh, don't run off stage because when you get through performing, I'm going to come out so we can plug your new album. Oh. So she wasn't surprised when I walked back out there because she perfect. thought we we're going to talk. So we touched on the album and then I said, oh, and there's one more thing. <gasps> oh, my gosh. But I, I can't say it still without choking up. But oh. so thrilled. She is such a an She's incredible a entertainer. She is amazing and she so deserves to be a member of the Opry and she had to wait so long to become inducted once you asked her. (laughs) So there was quite, there was some suspense and some build up there, but it's so cool. We got to hear the story from both her and you, two sides. Amazing. It's a historic moment and she's going to be such a great asset for the Opry too, as the Opry moves forward into a new era. And she's another go-getter like you, like just picking up the opportunities as they come and just running with it. And she's all for new ideas and staying relevant and what can she make happen now? And that I see that in both of you, actually. I'm trying to learn some things from her, you know. <laughs> she's amazing. And by the way, did she tell you that uh, we just finished writing a new song together, too? Well, yes, and you had a hit. Um, she had a bluegrass hit with one of your yeah. songs recently. How crazy is that? I never had a number one bluegrass song before. Number one. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. That's amazing. So tell me about this new one that you're doing, new collaboration. Well, here. Um, yeah, it was a song idea that I had. She told me when we got together uh she and Aaron Enderlin and I wrote, I don't know if you've talked to Aaron yet, but Not yet. You know, oh, man, you got to talk to her. Another go-getter oh. lady. You'll love her too. But anyway, when we got together to, to write, finish writing this song, mm-hmm. Rhonda said, do you know, I look back and it's been almost 15 years ago that you told me you started this song. Sometimes oh when I'm writing, I can hear someone singing it which Mm -hmm. I kind of go down that path. 
and I could always hear her with this song. So anyway, yeah, it's brand new, and she's rehearsing it with her band now, so I can't believe. The, the second time we got together, Erin got her schedule mixed up, so Rhonda <laughs> and I were in person and had Erin on the telephone. So oh, it was my great. gosh. Well, it's nice we can do things yes. like this, but there's nothing like being in person. Hopefully we can meet in person someday. Oh, we're going to make that happen. We'll do a little I part two. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, what, right. What's the song with Rhonda called so we can all look for it? It's called I Miss Missouri. I Miss Missouri. That's so cute. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Well, it's I, about, about her home state, but actually the when you hear it, it, it's going to have everybody remembering their home. Because, you know, I just told somebody the other day, they were saying, and you can testify to this too, because uh, being from uh, upstate New York, where you are, people say you're from Pennsylvania, Northwest Pennsylvania. What do you, how come you do country music? <laughs> I feel oh, like, yeah. you know, <laughs> you hear that too. Oh, of but course. Like I, said, I have found too, I've been all over the country, but if you grow up in the country, it's the same no matter what part of the country you're in. Right. And country music has gone so far beyond that territory that it once was. And so I love where you're the where you're from. Thank you great. so much. And you had a fun little fact about your parents here, some connection to Rochester, New York, where I'm yeah. from. They I remember my mom telling me, you know, of course, you're always interested in how your mom fell in love and how that all happened. And <laughs> she said she was uh, 17 and uh, almost 18, and but not quite. And her dad was not for it, but her mom was. And so her mom went with them and they ran away from northwestern Pennsylvania up to Rochester, <laughs> New York and got married. So. That's amazing. Oh, my gosh. We're, they're, you're going to have to do a little reunion and come visit the place and see it all. <laughs> well, I'd love to go up there. Beautiful. Well, I want to kick it back to the Opry a little bit because I know this is such a big part of your life. And I was reading one of your your blog posts about how you were missing your Opry family over the last few months. And um, it's going to be great to get back in there. But you were invited to come make your Opry debut in 66 as a promising, most promising new artist. And man, were they right about that or what? And then a year later, you were asked to become a member. Yeah, it was so crazy because uh, just that whirlwind that you're thrown in after when you first get a hit record. I mean, everybody, you know, for so long, nobody wanted to talk to you at all. And then all of a sudden, everybody wants to talk to you at once. And <laughs> so I, there were so many opportunities to go that I, I really didn't have time to come in to the Opry. And, but they didn't do a big induction back then like they do now. It's like, okay, she's here. That was pretty much it. But wow. uh, but it worked. It, it doesn't it matter. Worked. It was still uh, special. Yeah. Did someone yes. have to invite you? What? Did someone have to invite you? Was that tradition? Well, yes, it was. And but my, you know, there again, Jeannie taking things in her own hands. <laughs> I was on the road and they would call me and tell me what position my record moved up in the charts. And I'm like, that's great. But did Mr. Divine call? Because Art Divine was the Opry manager and like, no. Wow. And I'm like, well, call him. Please call, call him. him. Tell him I want to come in. Yeah, does he know about me? <laughs> you know. Oh my so gosh. my prodding and finally, um, Hal Smith, who had the booking agency and what little management I had, uh, said, well, the last time I took an Opry artist or an artist to the Opry, they didn't keep their commitment. And he said, I said I wouldn't do it again. But he said, you seem so sincere about it. He said, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and, and call him and mention it to him. But you better stick with it. I wish Mr. Smith was still with us to let him know, oh. say, is 54 years long enough to <laughs> Yeah. Did but, I make uh, my commitment? Oh, yeah. you sure did. You sure did. And you're still But it was so after active. that phone call then that Mr. Divine did call and, and invite amazing. me. So I'm thrilled. 
Wow. Well, congratulations. I know it's been quite some time that you're you're used to that one, but it's still such an honor and amazing to watch everything that you've done with the Opry since and hosting the artist to artist interviews. You've done a little bit of this yourself backstage. Yes. Amazing. And I just want to I just want to throw out a little question here for Fire Destination, everybody tuning in. Why don't you comment right now the amount of times you think Miss Jeannie Seeley has performed? Don't Google it, but how many times do you think Jeannie has performed at the Opry? We'll just give it a well, second. The last here. time the last time we even talked about it was twenty two hundred and something. You and of course I was a member on. of the I was a member of the Opry for 30 years before we had computers. So that's right. what's so crazy. So 30 years just, are not accounted for. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's insane. But Amazing. I, I want to say this, though, that uh, it, every time I walk in that back door, though, I realize what a privilege it is. And through the years, somewhere along the way, uh, I've kind of changed how I look at it because the Opry has given me so much. And now I feel like it's my time to give back to the Opry. When somebody said, are you there all the time? <laughs> what, it, you know, I'm like, if they need me, I am, oh. uh, I would want that job of, of booking that talent. That's a tough seat to be in. Yeah. And working everybody's schedules and dealing with everybody's little quirks of what they want or what they need. Uh -uh, I wouldn't want it. So I just don't usually ask anything. I just say, I'm here for whatever you need. You let me know if I, I can be there. And through Amazing. the pandemic shutdown and quarantine, um, the first night that they we couldn't have an, a, a studio live house audience, Mm -hmm. You know, somebody said, well, you can't do a show without an audience. I wrote an email to the president of the company <laughs> immediately. Said, Please tell me Please. you let us do a broadcast because we have an audience all over the world. We just can't have people in the building. And he said, your message says it all. And and you know that you do this all the time. You know you've got an audience out there just because you can't always see us doesn't right. mean we're not there. Right. Everybody tuning in and watching these broadcasts. And yeah, the Opry's done an amazing job keeping everybody informed and everyone's still tuning in for the live shows. And um, that's really the reason why we were able to go on over the last several months. It was just, if it weren't for this type of thing, I don't know what we would have done, but I'm so we're, glad. We're so blessed to be in this age of technology. Of course, mm -hmm. I'm, Bev is dragging me by the feet into this, teaching me where you have grown up knowing it. You know, but it's, it's still like not girl. fun. It's changing all the time. So just when I think I've got a finger on it, it just, you know, it changes and you don't know what's going to work next week. And you had it all set last week and now it's just totally different. So trust me, it's not just you. It's, it's really tough to keep up with it. You know, the wonderful thing, though, Claudia, about the country music fans, all of our fans, is they really don't care. No, they they're just great. love what we're doing and they're supporting and they're just glad to do it. So if the, things aren't exactly like they should be, they understand that. They and do. They, don't they understand. Anything. And going back to what you said earlier about, you know, you're not from Nashville or you're not. How are you singing country music from upstate New York? It just... Country music is about roots and it's about things that everybody can connect to. And that's just the kind of genuine attitude that we see across all the social media. It's just people want to be here and it's so wonderful to have that. So near and far, we're thankful for everybody tuning in today. So I've got to ask you about a special friend of yours. You are good buddies with uh, a man by the name Willie Nelson. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> How cool yeah, is so that? Tell us about yeah. Willie. You guys go way back. Uh, he's he's recorded some of your songs. You've done. You have a. You go and host on his radio show for Sirius XM. Done some acting together. Yeah, he. Uh, I first met Willie in 1963, 
And uh, when he first came to the West Coast, he was recording for Liberty Records, and I was working there as a secretary. Later on, a um, few months, maybe a year later, he was going to open a West Coast publishing office. Hmm. And part of my job there was to rent office space. So I actually rented an office to Willie Nelson. Oh my God. Wow. And showed him where all the recording studios were and all. But um, yeah, through the years, uh, when I moved back here, I, I was so fortunate at the time I came here to be able to be right in the middle with all these wonderful writers like Willie Nelson, Roger Miller, mm -hmm. Hank Cochran, Harlan Howard. And I got to learn from all of them. And uh, so, yeah, that friendship has been wonderful all through the years. And when I was invited to be a part of the Willie Nelson Roadhouse, I'm like, wow, how cool is this how to be cool. a part of the Willie Nelson family again? To wow. commemorate my very first show on Willie's Roadhouse, I dug out of my trunk my Willie Nelson tour jacket that oh, I wore. My Gosh, I wish you had I that see. to share with us today. You're going to have to send a picture of that. Oh, if I'd have thought, I'd have drug it out. Yeah, wow. I still have it, still fits. Not still fits? Well, oh, hey, that's a plus. Congratulations on that. 1981, <laughs> so yeah, it was cool. Yeah, and then Willie uh, did the duet with me on the new album, um, Not a Dry Eye in the House. Great song written it's by Dallas beautiful, Wayne. Beautiful and, uh, song. The song fascinated me, and I'll bet it did you too, because it's written like a theater uh, production, you know, not a dry eye in the house. Mm -hmm. We hear that and uh, standing in the spotlight, but it's really about not a dry eye since you left the house, which is our home. So great song. I loved what Dallas said when he heard it. He said, I love the reading y'all did because it sounds like two old friends having an intimate conversation. So it I thought does. that was a great, great description. I love it. I have goosebumps when I hear it. And it just, it really does. You're both speaking from your soul and it just sounds like old friends reconnecting and really telling that story. And we have a clip of that one if we want to share a little bit. Do you wow. mind if we play some for our fans here tonight? That would be great. Thank Beautiful. You. Let's roll the song. Not a dry eye in the house. There's not a dry eye in the house We used to call a home Oh, there's nothing left But memory is wood and stone And when I think of you That's when I lose control There's not a dry eye in the house Since you've been gone. So beautiful. I absolutely love that. And I love the little lyric video you put together for that one. I think everybody's going to enjoy that. Where should people listen if they want to go find that one? On YouTube? Yeah, every, everything's up digitally on iTunes, Spotify, wherever, or a lot of my fans, and actually, I'm this way too. I still like holding that physical copy of the oh, CD. Yeah. Me too. I still do. And uh, so they can go to geniesealy.com. And just so everybody knows, too, everything that goes out of my office, I sign it because wow. I'm still in that stage. I know how much all the things I have that were signed mean to me. So I want to keep that going as long as I can still write. 
That's amazing. <laughs> well, you heard her, everybody. Go over and check out that Jeannie Seely merch. And this cannot be true. I saw on your site. Is it possible that you have just come out with your very first T-shirt? Your very first yeah. Jeannie Seely T-shirt. It's so cute, by the way, the little baseball tee. I love it. Well, I got to make sure you get one. Uh, yeah, um, just through the years, I, I had some hats for a while. And um, part of it, back when Jack Green and I were working together, it, we had a Jack Green Jeannie Seely t-shirt in connection with a album promotion that came out. Mm -hmm. But that was just a short time. But I never had one of my own. In fact, I always joked and said, one day I'm going to make a T-shirt and all it's just going to be a plain T-shirt. And it says, a Jeannie Seeley T-shirt. Oh, my gosh. Everybody I can say, it. I want a Jeannie Seeley T-shirt. Well, here you go. You oh, my God. And it would have to have some cheetah on it just to make it a little <laughs> bit more you. <laughs> <laughs> but part of that, too, uh, I didn't carry a lot of stuff after uh, I sold the bus and uh, that which was not too long after Jack and I split the show. I just did not want I wasn't enjoying any of that. I didn't want that heavy responsibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of a sudden there was no fun in it. And this is supposed to be fun. Exactly. Have you had a favorite part? It seems like you have your hands in a little bit of absolutely everything. Has there been a favorite part? Well, I don't know. I think it's like just what, you know, I'm just so lucky to get to do a little bit of everything. So by the time I get tired of doing one thing, I get to do something else. Get to so switch it up. Yeah, there's something different about each one of these. You know, as a performer, you get a, you get a, di a different feel when you're on stage performing than you do in this setting, mm -hmm. as well as uh, do you, you write too, don't you? Yep. Yep. And that's always a new adventure every time. Right. Yeah. So that comes from a whole different direction. Of course, in the studio, you know, there's pressure there, oh <laughs> but gosh, I yeah. like to, I like to record with all the musicians still there too. That's still my favorite way to record. Perfect. Sorry, one second. Don't you what? Okay. Before, be I just want to fill you in here on a little something I've been up to. So I'm working on a full length record myself, and it's my first one. We've been working on it for about four years, and we finally did it. We sealed it up this week, and I want to send you one of my songs before the record comes out for you to have a listen. Oh, great. Good deal. Perfect. Well, I want to talk about your current radio single, if you could call it that, which has a beautiful story behind it. And I know it's near and dear to your heart and a really good friend of yours. And I want, I want you to tell everybody about this one. Okay. Yes, we're speaking about Dottie West. And yes. Dottie was a lady that I admired very much growing up in Pennsylvania when I was first, first aware of Dottie was on a show called The Landmark Jamboree out of Cleveland, Ohio. But I didn't meet her until years later when I moved to Southern California. Dottie came out to work the Palomino Club. Wow. And so I, of course, was there. And when I went up to meet her after the show, I was telling her about the landmark Jamboree and Dottie. I'll never forget. She threw her head back laughing. She said, I, I don't even remember the last time I saw or heard from anybody who remembered that show. Oh, so I think gosh. it was kind of like an immediate bond mm -hmm. there for us. And we we talked and laughed till they closed the place and then went back to my house. So the friendship was absolutely cemented right there wow and uh she encouraged me to move to nashville and uh it was so helpful to me um the and uh, another phase about dotty west and our friendship i had a bad accident in 77 dotty was there with me supporting me helping me overcome all of that so one of the biggest disappointments in my life was when she had her accident and I could not be there. I could not help her Aww. like she had for me. 
So when Ron Harmon found this song that Dottie West had started and he took it to Bobby Tomberlin and Steve Warner to finish, when they brought the song to me, uh, I, I just was so thrilled. Um, after you get through crying and, and yeah. knowing, I truly believe the boys finished it the way Dottie would, I think, that message. This line, the hook line of it, I just go on living, if you could call it that, yeah. seemed to be a mantra of Dottie's. I know this journal goes back to the late 60s even, mm -hmm. but I remember several different downtimes in her life of her saying that, you know, when oh. things were going wrong. I remember saying to her myself, how are you doing, Dottie? And her saying, I just go on living, if you could wow. call it that. So um, I think it's just perfect the way the guys finished this song. And it meant so much to me, too, that I felt like in the studio, I got to finish something else for her that she started, something that she didn't get done, didn't get right. to finish. And who so better we, than one of her closest friends? I, what a, an amazing tribute. And I think that, yeah, she she would have, who knows, but maybe she would have picked you to do this song anyways. And so she's smiling down. This is just amazing. And the fact that the song is so powerful and it's about just going on, it's like just remembering her in every line. Well, you know, you know what's so interesting to me, I didn't think about, maybe it was the timing of this after what we've all been through with COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, it's resonating with so many people. Right. I mean, I've had people saying, how did you know this is what I'm going through right now? People right. have lost people during this. So, you know, it's... Everything happens when it's supposed to, I think. And this song just means so much. I'm glad it resonates with you as well. Absolutely, it does. And hopefully it can help some people out there find some peace while they're listening. And we have a little bit of that one today too, if you wanna, if you don't mind, if we're gonna play some of that. All right, let's hear it. This one is off of Jeannie's record called An American Classic, which is out with Curb Records right now. And I hope that everybody will go find this one on all the streaming platforms, if you could call it that. Here it is. I get up every morning have my coffee, gather my things Jump right in that same old traffic Welcome to my routine And then at work I hear a voice How you doing? Someone asks I just go on if you could call it that Five During this interview oh, oh, I'm so, so you. glad you're enjoying it Thank you so much We only have a little bit left to go And um, it just it's not hard when there's so much to talk about with you. I was truly overwhelmed looking at all the bullet points and reading your stories and watching your YouTube videos and um, just going right back to your original hits. It's just amazing to see how much you've been able to just maintain such a strong career the whole time. It's just so exciting for me to dig into. And um, so I don't know. I just I lit up reading about you and was excited to really get some dirty details on everything. <laughs> right. Good. All right. <laughs> All right. So are we back on, Tony? Yeah, we're back. All right. It's such a beautiful song. Absolutely an amazing tribute to Miss Dottie West. And I hope you guys will go check that one out. And I just have to add that we really hope to see Miss Jeannie Seeley here inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame very soon because I don't know anybody more deserving of that spot right now. So most people probably think you're already there. And, uh, right? Yeah, that's been Let's a do thing. it. 
That's got to be I a think thing. Part of the part of that is because when I did got the star in the walkway of stars, a lot of people yeah. thought that maybe at that time, mm-hmm. you know, that would be just an absolute thrill for me. And I think what that means to to most artists, and certainly would be to me, is it just validates your life's work. It just shows you that that you did make an impact on the areas you wanted to. You did leave something here. And uh, in my case, if it's ever going to happen, I would love for it to happen while I'm still able to be active because yeah. I think there's so much more you can do when you have that platform to operate from. So right. that's another reason it would be wonderful for me. It would be amazing. And you're so deserving. And I mean, life's work. I I have four pages in front of me, but it goes on and on and on. And there is a Facebook page out there now, Jeannie Seeley, induct Jeannie Seeley in the Country Music Hall of Fame. So everybody go get on that page, like it, share it, put a little post out there that you watched this tonight and just, you know, let's give some kudos where they're due. This is, it would be amazing and such an honor. And you truly, truly deserve to be there with all those other greats. Uh, Thank you. Be nice to be up there with all my buddies. Oh yeah. All your buddies. It's amazing. So how did you know that you were going to be able to, to play with the big boys? You, you really soared in popularity when there were just so many men in country that were kind of stealing the spotlight. And how did you know you were going to be, when did you feel validated? Like, okay, I can play with these guys. Well, let me ask you this. It hasn't changed that much. How do you think you're going to play with the big boys? <laughs> Good <laughs> We're gonna, question. You're going to do the same thing I did. It's Good like, question. no, I am not going away. That's yeah. That was my attitude. I'm no, here to stay. I'm, I'm, yeah, and that's what you're going to do, too. We've tried to level the playing field as much as we possibly could. And the girls coming up later in the late 80s and the 90s worked mm-hmm. very hard, too, to level it. And mm-hmm. they had they made some inroads. I think there were some changes in, in radio during that time that allowed them to push those doors open a little more. And then all of a sudden, it was like, what happened here again? Yeah. Somebody created some trend that they didn't think the female artists fit in. But I think that um, I think that's changing. I think a lot of you young women coming in, you are you're not. I think you're doing it right. Let me say this right. I think you girls are coming in just proving what you have you're not saying move over we we have a right to be here too i don't hear any whining Mm -hmm. i just hear solid good music and songs coming i try to say to people all the time they say well you know i don't like today's there's no good songs being written and i'm like excuse me (laughs) you can't how are you turn it up a little bit yeah right (laughs) tell me who's written a better song than uh more hearts than mine that's the song i love my god ingrid and that's just incredible yeah what about i hope you dance tell me that's not a good song so a lot of these people and a lot of them are people and my my age my peers and i'll say you know as hard as it is to accept it's not our era anymore it's simply not and it keeps changing i remember when i first came on the scene they were saying well she's not really country and when they heard strings and not fiddles, I heard it again, you know, yep. and just all the years of me pushing to allow women to host at the Opry. It's like, well, that's just not how it's done in country music. Mm-hmm. It's tradition. And I had to point out that it really even smelled like discrimination. So yeah. I got a lot of static over that, too. <laughs> but uh, I think the main thing is to make sure you're bringing the top of your game to the table yeah. and, and then just like you say, just hold steady 
And I think that's what I see in, in a whole new generation of you girls coming up that, that I'm so proud to see. Oh, well, thank you for including me in that in that group, because we're really trying. And I think that you're right. It comes down to the song and the content. And it's just got to be you and do as, as great as you can. And somebody will take notice. So I think sincerity. And you've got that. There's no question. Right. Thank you so much. Well, that was some beautiful advice. And I will I take that to heart. And I really, really appreciate that. So is there anything, Jeannie, that you feel like you can't wait to do or you haven't done yet? You've you've acted, you've written for so many icons, um, you've had number ones as a duet uh, partner and as a solo artist and as a songwriter. You've been a longtime member of the Grand Ole Opry. You've got a book out there called Pieces of a Puzzle Mind, everybody. Check it out. Sounds witty and amazing. I've got to read this. Is there anything oh, yes, you, you have, have not to. done that you hope to do? You have definitely got to have that book. I've got to check that out. No <laughs> <laughs> One of the pages in there, it was just, by the way, it's a thought book. It's like, it's a collection of thoughts that I had through the years and mm-hmm. I just scribble them down and finally one day put them together in a book. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give um, us a couple. One of my favorite one pages in there, it said, uh, uh, well, th- let me tell you this one. It said, uh, we don't always approve. We don't always agree. We don't always understand. We don't have to. We're friends. Oh, and I love that. that. Just that. But then there's this one that I kind of lean on more. It says, no one can tell you when you're over the hill. Because no one but you knows which hill you're climbing. <laughs> oh, so maybe to answer it. that question, I don't know. Uh, wow. I just, I am so blessed to be doing everything I've wanted to do. I guess I just have to say I want to keep doing everything yeah. I am. I love doing the show, my Roadhouse show. Mm-hmm. I've got a couple of album ideas that I want to do next. And uh, wow. I hope to keep writing some songs and and certainly want to be at the Grand Ole Opry anytime they'll let me come in. Amazing. So, one well, other I- thing uh, that I was uh, given in the last year that I never even dreamed of was Lincoln Memorial University gave me an honorary doctorate of the arts degree. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. So phenomenal. I mean, I got to go to the graduation uh, with the cap and the gown and it was just something I never, ever dreamed of. And uh, that's the uh, same school, uh, that gave Ralph Stanley his doctorate of music degree. So I'm very proud of that. That is so amazing. Congratulations. That's amazing. Well, we hope to keep hearing more and more and more from Jeannie Seeley. It seems like, you know, there could be a new record coming, but we're still celebrating this current one you have, an American classic. Um, I hope everybody will go check her out on all her social media because this isn't somebody who's just sitting around and waiting for something cool to come up. She is just making it happen all the time. And there's lots more to come from Jeannie. So... Let's let's keep in touch, and we'd love to have you back on sometime for maybe a part two. Hopefully, we'll get down and get to do this in person at some point. That would be wonderful. I can't wait for that to happen. We'll get some of those other girlfriends together, and we'll yes. make this happen. Sounds like fantastic. we said, we'll just take a hold of the reins and do it. Okay. Let's Congratulations it. to you on your show. Oh. You've done a great job, and Rhonda spoke so highly of you, Sue. So I knew I was in for a good treat with you. And thank you for inviting me aboard. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And we'll talk soon. All right. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. Bye. 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 
Oh my goodness. Is she the greatest person or what? <laughs> that was so great. I'm so happy you could be here for this awesome episode with Miss Jeannie Seely. Um, she's got tons of stuff coming our way. I'm sure of it. So make sure you keep tuning in with her and seriously go check out that Facebook page and Dr. Jeannie Seely into the Country Music Hall of Fame because she so deserves that spot, everybody. Thank you for being here with us on Fired Up Live. I have some very exciting news. I'm holding the winners from last episode. Some of you out there are going to be coming up to your doorstep and checking out a big box full of goodies from Fire Disc. One of you is going to win a Fire Disc cooker. Somebody's going to go home with a Fire Disc swag pack. And we're even going to send out some Hoiser Country Blend coffee too because we can't have our Fire Disc Nation out there without Hoiser Country Blend in your kitchen for those beautiful mornings. All right. I have the winners right here. I'm going to start with the coffee pack. It is going home to Donald Rose. I recognize that name. Thank you so much for being part of Fire Disc Nation and Hoiser Country. Oh my goodness. The swag pack. Fire Disc swag pack is going to Scott Carlone. Congratulations. And last but not least, that beautiful Fire Disc cooker is going to make some mean meals for Dwight Golden. Congratulations, you guys. We'll be reaching out to you soon. You're probably going to hear from somebody on my team, so, so stay tuned for that. And we can't wait for more winners to come, more amazing guests on this show, so keep tuning in once a month here for Fired Up Live. And I'm just going to wrap things tonight with uh, one of my absolute favorite tunes to play. And... Uh, this one's by Patty Loveless. It's called You Don't Even Know Who I Am. She left the car in the driveway. She left the key. Don't even know who I am 
what do you care if I go? Thank you so much for joining us for this episode number 12 of Fired Up Live. Such an inspirational night. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Maybe you're outside having a little bonfire by now with your firedest nearby. I can't wait to see you for the next episode, so make sure you keep following along. Go check out that Firedisc flagship store in Katy, Texas, if you guys are out that way. And uh, we've got coffee at hoisercountry.com. We've got all the episodes for from all the Fired Up Lives at firediscookers.com. Uh, so make sure you go check that out. And I'll see you next time for another awesome episode of Fired Up Live. Cheers, you guys. In today's world, time with family is more valuable than ever. Meet Fire Disc, the original portable propane cooker. It sets up in seconds, fires up fast, and cooks anything you throw at it. Whether it's a quick meal at home or in the great outdoors, Fire Disc has you covered. Take your kitchen outside and enjoy everything that makes good food great. Fire Disc, cooking at home made easy.